The Emperor Majorian is uh, generally accepted as the last great Roman statesman general that uh, ascended to the imperial throne. And uh, with him, the Roman Empire had pretty much the last chance of resurrecting itself after the barbarian invasions of the 4th and 5th centuries. Majorian surpassed in every virtue all who have ever been emperors of the Romans, described the uh, Byzantine historian Procopius in the 6th century. And Edward Gibbon, in uh, Decline and Fall of the Roman Empire, also showers this uh, emperor with praise. Gibbon describes Majorian as, quote, a great and heroic character, such as sometimes arise in a degenerate age to vindicate the honour of the human species. But Majorian wasn't just a general, he was also a good administrator, and uh, he had an eye on protecting the pagan heritage of the empire as well, which was under threat at this time. And he declared his interest in a law novella that was introduced at Ravenna on July the 11th, 458 AD. Therefore, by this general law, we sanction that all the buildings that have been founded by the ancients as temples and uh, as other monuments and that were constructed for the public use or pleasure shall not be destroyed by any person. And this was part of an edict by the emperor to try and preserve the pagan temples of the city during the Christian era when many of these structures were either being pulled down or simply closed and then taken advantage of by locals for building material, either for their own houses or buildings or, or new churches and uh, Christian basilicas and so forth. And it's an interesting glimpse into an attempt by one of the more capable emperors of the very late Roman period to preserve the pagan brilliance of Rome. So let's take a deeper look into Majorian and his edict. Well, firstly, a little more detail on Majorian. Majorian came to power on the 28th of December, 457 AD, after uh, defeating the, the Emperor Avitus, and several months later he was uh, declared Emperor by his troops. And this was just 19 years before the Western Roman Empire finally disappeared. Majorian's problem during his reign was that it, he didn't hold sole and supreme power, and that was because real power lay with Richima, a general of Germanic origin who, because of his race, couldn't qualify as emperor himself, but who acted essentially as a kingmaker in this last phase of the Western Roman Empire. Majorian actually had great success in his short tenure as emperor. He uh, inflicted a heavy defeat on a Vandal army looting Italy, and he also defeated the Goths, returning Spain temporarily back into imperial control. And he was planning to take the fight to the Vandals by invading North Africa as well. And uh, if this had worked, both Spain and North Africa would have been consolidated back into Roman control. Unfortunately, the fleet that had been collected to invade Vandal territory was sabotaged and burnt, and so the plan failed. But it was obvious from his campaigns that this highly energetic emperor was bent on bringing some of the glory back to Rome. Majorian, however, met a, an unfortunate end. Richima, the effective kingmaker, jealous of his success, took advantage of his trust in him and uh, had him arrested and he was reportedly tortured to death. And after Majorian, the rest of the Roman emperors to succeed him were largely inconsequential puppets of the barbarian generals. Some of his laws and edicts that uh, Majorian passed we do know of. Around 12 survive, although the details of some of these are lost to us now. Some of the novellas are more general and uh, related to the defence of the empire, and uh, others are more religious and have to do with Christianity. Novella 8, for instance, was a sign of the uncertainty of the times and uh, related to everyone being able to bear arms in defence of his town or city. The more interesting ones relate to the power of the Christian church and uh, Christianity in general by this time. Novella number six, for example, was to stop uh, Christian families from forcing their daughters into becoming nuns. The idea being that uh, essentially they would be prevented from marrying, which would mean the family having to pay a dowry. Majorian set the age for a woman entering the church at 40, meaning no young girl could be uh, coerced into a life in the church. Number nine relates to adultery, which was now punishable by death. But number 11 is perhaps the most unusual and interesting and uh, legislates against any kind of person being pressured or coerced into the church. So these laws relating to the church provide a, an interesting glimpse of the, the power of the establishment by this time, such that the emperor himself needed to curb these excesses. But the law that related to the protection of pagan temples and other old structures was novella number four. So let's take a deeper and more in-depth look at this law. 
So let's get into it and have a closer look at novella number four. Majorian begins by highlighting the decline of the magnificent look that Rome had in previous ages, and he seems to blame the high officials of the city for their lax approach to protecting the old temples and other monuments of the previous ages. While we rule the state, it is our will to correct the practice whose commission we have long detested, whereby the appearance of the venerable city is marred. Indeed, it is manifest that the public buildings in which the adornment of the entire city of Rome consists are being destroyed everywhere by the punishable recommendation of the office of the prefect of the city. The prefect, he says, are uh, allowing the more prestigious buildings to be cannibalised for much more modest structures. While it is pretended that the stones are necessary for public works, the beautiful structures of the ancient buildings are being scattered, and in order that something small may be uh, repaired, great things are being destroyed. Hence the occasion now arises that also each and every person who is constructing a private edifice through the favouritism of the judges who are situated in the city does not hesitate to take presumptuously and to transfer the necessary materials from the public places, although these things which belong to the splendour of the cities ought to be preserved by civic affection, even under the necessity of repair. So Majorian then declares pagan temples to be maintained and uh, warns of harsh punishment against transgressors who flout the new law. Therefore, by this general law, we sanction that all the buildings that have been founded by the ancients as temples and uh, as other monuments and that were constructed for the public use or pleasure shall not be destroyed by any person. And then it shall, it shall transpire that a judge who should uh, decree that this should be done shall be punished by the payment of 50 pounds of gold. And if his uh, apparitors and uh, accountants should obey him when he so orders and should not resist him in any way by their own recommendation, they shall be subjected to the punishment of cudgelling and they shall uh, also be mutilated by the loss of their hands through which the monuments of the ancients that should be preserved are desecrated. So a fascinating glimpse into one emperor who, although a Christian, tries to preserve the pagan temples of the city from being pulled down and cannibalised. How successful he was is uncertain. Certainly apart from the Pantheon and uh, a few other places, much of the pagan past of the city was obliterated, with only a few pagan temples being taken over by Christians and turned into uh, churches. So is it his attempt, we have to say, was a failure in retrospect, although if he had survived and his uh, reign had lasted much longer, perhaps a lot more of the pagan heritage of the city might have been saved. Anyway, I appreciate you watching this video, and uh, if you did find this video of value, please do consider liking the video and uh, subscribing to the channel.